In this video segment, we will discuss the critical role campus networks play in supporting trusted identities in the research and education space. We will consider what the best sources are for user data, who should maintain those sources, and how to work with trusted partners on and off campus for additional data exchange. Looking at identity management from the campus network perspective might not seem like the most sensible way to go about considering identity services. I mean, after all, shouldn't identity management be left to human resources or to the student systems? How is the network even involved? No one area, be it HR or the network, has sole say in how identifiers are managed and used on the campus, and yet, together, they offer the only authoritative source of information regarding who is on the campus network. While authoritative data will come from an administrative system, the network needs to be prepared to deal with the fact that sometimes, when dealing with federated identity services, those administrative systems might not be on your campus. Visiting scholars and researchers, and even walk-in users in the library, come in with their own identities. Just as you would manage devices attached to your network, you will also manage users. Knowing both what devices and what users are on the campus network allows for better business decisions. Administrators have a greater understanding of how bandwidth is utilized and can manage the security of the network on a much more granular level. The protection of assets can happen in a properly layered fashion, starting with the network in support of whatever system authorization controls are in place. Of course, the campus will not get this valuable level of control without cost. Identity services must be managed and the data integrity maintained in order for the information to remain useful and valuable to administrators. From the network perspective, the approach of integrating identity management into the network planning actually builds on a very familiar model. Good network design already factors in a clear separation of different functions that split core functions, data distribution, and access control. The protocols used are standards-based and meant to be interoperable and scalable. Identity management, when designed properly, is built the same way, out of open standards, scalable, with clear separation of functions and roles. So what does a network first look for in an identity management system? First and foremost, the network needs a user identifier, often called a NetID, short for network identifier. These are unique, university-wide identifiers that are bound to a unique individual user and used at login time, used for authentication, authorization, and administration. By having this single identifier, different systems can take advantage of its very existence to help create a single sign-on environment. Within a single sign-on environment, or SSO environment, individuals won't have to remember different usernames and passwords for each system, and help desk support for things like password resetting can be consolidated. There are policies that will need to be decided at both the campus administration and the network administration levels on how to handle guest accounts, club or group accounts, and possibly even alumni accounts. Here's where you should definitely consider services like Edurome and Federated Identity, noting that these topics are covered elsewhere in this video series. This may seem like a lot of work, and it is. The good news in all of this is that there is a wealth of material and r &E community support around campus identity systems. If your campus or institution is still working on authorization by IP address and per system accounts, you can take this as an opportunity to learn what has and has not worked with other campuses around the world. There are templates out there with groups like the Incommon Federation in the US, JISC in the UK, and ReFeds that will put you on a solid path for a well-designed identity system and network profile for your campus. See the additional slides in this set for pointers to case studies, communities of practice, and pointers to specific open source tools commonly used in the identity management space. So what do you need to get started? Before anything else, start by making sure you have a clear list of what you have to work with on your campus. This inventory should include the data sources you have available, a list of where authentication over a network is required and how authentication is done, a list of authorization policies, noting that authentication and authorization are two very different things, a list of existing software and services on the network, an understanding of the requirements of your users and their collaborations, both on and off campus, 
and a clear list of campus policies around the expectations of privacy, security, and acceptable use.